Adding on to what we were talking about yesterday, where Ross Ulbricht launched his NFT collection, last I checked, and I checked it last night, uh, so it may have gone up since then, but they have raised just such a ton of money, uh, which is so awesome. Uh, I think that it was like 261 Ether when I last checked, which is $1.2 million for this NFT collection, but an interesting development. And it sort of goes along with what uh, we saw with Constitution DAO, this template that they set up about how do we fractionalize an NFT and allow all these contributors who don't necessarily have $1.2 million on their own to beat someone else's bid, perhaps we can pull resources and uh, raise even more money and get a whole bunch of people uh, participating in ownership. That's what uh, a DAO has decided to do with this Ross Ulbricht collection. They're calling themselves Please a DAO. Um, they're basically a bunch of investors who launched this DAO. Anyone could contribute. Uh, so if you're watching the show and you're interested, you can send ETH to the address if you go to free, uh, freerossdao.com. Um, so it's very interesting. The way that it works, I mean, to start off with, they seeded the DAO with 240 ETH, which was worth about 1 million. Um, and 240, they said, was symbolizing Ross's sentence. Uh, they also said that they're going to donate extra. But then what happens at the end, if they win the auction, the NFT will be fractionalized into Ross tokens and distributed pro rata, weighted by contribution. Ross will represent governance rights within the free Ross DAO and a fractional part of the Genesis collection NFT, which is super interesting. And then uh, you got a bunch of multi-signers there, a lot of whom you will recognize. So Nadia from Pussy Riot is one of the multi-signers. Uh, Kobe from Up Only is another one. There are just a lot of people who, you know, they just believe in this cause. Um, what the DAO says that their main outcome is, is they said, number one, we will free Ross. I don't know how they're going to do that, but Godspeed to them. I, I wish them the best of luck there. Uh, number two, we will advance prison reform. Absolutely. What a noble cause because there are more incarcerated people in the US than anywhere else, and which is just absolutely insane. Uh, and number three, we will share uh, by uh, per capita. We Number three, we will share Ross's work with the world and give everyone a unique opportunity to own a piece of it. So I just think that this is really interesting and super interesting just from the DAO perspective. The fact that the these barriers to entry are being taken down with this decentralization technology. It's super cool that you don't have to be a big player. You don't have to have 1.2 million. Like I was looking at the prices last night. I was like, oh, my, my small mindedness, like 1.2 million. Well, you know, don't have the funds to place a bid up on that. And then the doubt comes along. It's like, oh, you don't have to Naomi. And I'm like, if only I was smarter, I would have thought of this. But I think it's such a great idea that now everyone can contribute. It goes to a good cause and you can raise just far more money than like a single individual would be able to. But I'm going to throw this to the group. Whose hand did I see? Up? I think I saw Zach's hand. So Go for it, Zach. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say point of fact. So Pleaser DAO has been around for a bit. This is famously the DAO that has that Wu-Tang Clan album from that shady Martin whatever guy. Ooh. So uh, the fact that they're branching out into this is interesting. Pleaser DAO obviously has been an NFT uh, collective for a bit. So the fact that they're sort of hopping on this train, I think, is, is, is notable and certainly interesting. And I hope that... Um, some of those uh, ends that they're working toward are satisfied. I will say I'm becoming increasingly skeptical of these DAO things and Constitution DAO sort of like soured me a little bit on this all because they're just, you're just contributing your ETH, you're getting some token and you're going to flip that token into something else. And uh, that's fine, I guess. I guess that's the reward for you participating in this thing. You know, they're called governance tokens. They, 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 you know, you can say as much as you want that they won't have value, but they end up having value and you end up coming out quite ahead. So, you know, Constitution now had this noble aim to spread civic education across the land from, from small town to large. But in reality, it was just a people token ICO and people were able to flip that people into more than they probably initially contributed in ETH. So I hope this isn't another example of that. I hope this is a, an example of something that will be noble uh, in its in its aims. But right now, I think like that is the undertold story about DAOs is that in some respects, it's just a token generation event. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, so I have to. Uh, I think Pleaser DAO is people pleasers organization, and they did some art for my former employer, Fortune. So I have to shout that out. Um, the the question that I have about why they did this with a token is the NFT is like a fundraiser thing for something that you believe in, right? So if you're going to get a fraction of an NFT that's based on basically um, like a like a donation, 
wouldn't it be nice if you could actually get an NFT back that was some sort of reflection of your partial ownership of that original NFT that you could then display on your Twitter or what have you to show that, like, I supported this cause. I supported this movement. We were talking about memes. I mean, this is the ultimate meme. You want people to be able to display their commitment to this and, and not just a meme. Obviously, it's a very real issue. Um, and so I, I wonder about the potential for something like that versus here's just a governance token. It seems like a more appealing idea to me um, just off the top of my yeah, head. Just, Naomi. Just wanted to, uh, the final words, just support what you're saying, David. I think it's a little different from Constitution DAO where it wasn't even this digital asset and you kind of didn't even have ownership rights. You had right. like, you know, you, you got had to, to decide where decisions. it could be stored. Uh -uh. Yeah, and with this one, I think you're right. I think the fact that it's a charitable event that is going to a cause, it's something people believe in, people would support this and have been supporting this for like the last nine years uh, without any ex expectation of any returns. So this is an example of something where they can actually get something something in, in return and feel like they were part of a movement that raised a ton of money. Um, so these DAOs have a lot of momentum behind them. There's sort of more impetus for people to get involved because there's like a ticking clock. There's like a bid. There's like, you know, we're pushing the, this price higher. So I think it's a, just a really interesting way to raise funds for a great cause. 